Hello and welcome to Krakow in Poland. It's the International Canoe Federation's second Slalom World Cup of the 2018 season. The world's top athletes have gathered for four days of competition and we're going to be looking back at the best of the action. Krakow, of course, built in 2003. It's a feed coming from a dam. Known to be a rather difficult course, the World Cup standings after one World Cup. Sidious Tassiades took maximum points. Can he do the same today? Well, no, because he didn't even make the final. But these are the 10 athletes who came through the 30 from the semi-finals. And let's look at the best of them. Michael Yane has had some World Cup victories. The fastest skateboarder on the planet. We often see him sprinting down the Troya course in Prague. He's a righty, so naturally he holds the tee with the left hand and forces with the right hand. That really does come into play. So the idea is, in theory, quite simple. There's a 260 metre channel, 12 metres wide, made of concrete, a flat bottom, and the sides are also made of concrete. Water's flowing down at quite a fast rate, about 15 cubic metres a second. Yani here, we see him negotiating a very small fraction of his course. He took initial first place. So, as you see, the idea is he's sitting in his canoe and he's trying to negotiate himself through 22 gates. Six of them are upstream, so they're red and white. Green and white are the downstream. Alexander Slavskowski came second in the first World Cup in Liptovsky, where his father used to be the mayor. He's known as being very stylish, and you can see the bib is number one, which means he's the number one athlete in the world on current performances. This is a really tricky situation. There's currents coming from both directions. Clearly, he's a master of his art. If you watch closely, the paddle is nearly always in the water. Stavkowski is strong, but he's not really using all his strength. He's just gliding the water to have the fastest passage possible. And here he comes through and takes the lead by, well, a quarter of a second. David Florence, national hero, double Olympian, double world champion. And in 2013 was the C2 and the C1 world champion. And what's nice this weekend is Richard Hounslow, who is his partner in the C2, is now coaching him. David's known for his no-nonsense approach. Trains harder than anyone. Paul's harder than anyone as well. Always looking to better himself. Well, it looked really close at the mid-stage, and this is a really crucial cross, using the speed of the water. Again, another righty. So he's always trying to put his force on what's called his onside. A cross stroke is where he has to go, really use the strong muscles and the strong core. He's actually practicing switching, not has the uh, perfected it yet, but look at him, really pulling all the way to the line and wins. The top six here came within 0.93 of a second. So, Florence first, Slavkowski second, and Yanni third. It couldn't have been any better, to be honest. Uh, we had the European Championships not that long ago now, and I won the semi-final, and then I just didn't put in a good run. And it's it's so disappointing to to feel like you're going all right, to put in good races and qualifying or semis, but but not to do it when it really counts. So today, especially going off last, to put in another really really good run, and, and unfortunately good enough for the win as well. Uh, I'm so so happy. Really really pleased with that. So the standings after two events, Slavkowski medaled both times, so he's leading the ball at the moment. Jessica Fox, Karina Kunle, Ricky Funk, after one race last weekend, that is the order. It's the start list for the final. Great to see Fiona Penny back for Great Britain, her 19th season at top level. Stephanie Horn, born in Germany, migrated herself to Italy, where she married a top paddler. Let's see how she can get on. Normally known for taking her dogs with her on all events. Not here this weekend, however. These are really tough conditions and all the athletes were saying it's really challenging. The water's swirling quite a lot, so it's unpredictable. 
However, they do use video analysis and the coaches have a chance to really look closely at the situation before these athletes go down. In fact, all these athletes have already been down once in the semi-finals and these are the top 10. So with the double bladed paddle, we really see that they can pull their way through. Steffi Horn here has been around for many years. Lucy Badu, Lucy Badu is also rather good in the canoe. Quite a few of the athletes, in fact, specialise in both events. And here she goes, young and strong, and did very well in the French trials. Now, the French trials are probably the most difficult selection races in the world. The first few gates were causing an awful lot of problems, but Lucy seems to negotiate them well. If you hit a gate, it's a two second penalty. If you miss a gate, completely, so that's not having the whole of your head and part of your boat at the same time through the gate, it's a 50 second penalty. Effectively, that's game over. So you see on the side, there's judges pressing little buttons if it's free. However, they can also give you a 250 second penalty. Now, Lucy does a great run here. Look at that, three hundredths of a second. Less than half a meter moves into first place. Now, Jess Fox is the superstar. World Cup won of Litoski. She not only won the K1, but she won the C1 as well. From the famous Fox dynasty, father multiple world champion, mother world multiple world champion. Jess, born in Marseille, moved across with her family to Australia when she's four, multilingual, multi-talented, and even ambassador for the Youth Olympic Games. Jess has a rare capacity to see what's happening and with her extreme fitness and subtlety, she really does take the most out of this event. Great overhead pictures. You can really see the flow of the water here. It's fast and furious. Put yourself three or four centimeters to the wrong side and you drop off the back of a wave. In and out on one stroke, that's really what you're trying to do. Jess is powerful, but really uses the water in her favor. Where's she going to come? Well, of course, first. Jessica Fox takes the gold for Australia, Lucy Boudou, the silver for France, and Stephanie Horn, the bronze for Italy. Such a difficult course and quite hard on the arms, and I didn't go as fast as my semi-final, but um, look, clean, tidy, and no major mistakes, and and a sprint to the finish, and I'm so thrilled to, to win again. It's, it's, I can't believe it. The standings with two victories, 120 points for Jess Fox, Ricardo Funk, all saying with a shout. Hey Dean, I'm Samuel Curtis. I am out here in Krakow getting ready to race in the Irish summer weather, giving us a home advantage out here. So yeah, I've been, I've been racing internationally since 2010 when I was a junior and it's been that entire time spent training out of Ireland as well. So it's just training, training hard there, have no excuse not to be as fit as anyone else. So we're just trying to show everyone that we can still do the same out of Ireland as everyone else is doing on the continent. We look at ourselves as like the underdog, that the way we look at it is we hope that if any of the other nations looked at us, they wouldn't be smiling, they'd be worried about what we were doing. So we do every other little thing that we can that they maybe they don't do to give us that little that little step we can get, those, all those little marginal gains to catch up on them. As athletes in Ireland, you're a black sheep, because I'm in college at the moment as well, so all of my friends in college, like a couple of nights a week, they'll go out for a few pints, whereas I just can't. That's one of those little things that we can control, that if I don't do that every week, that's I can be fresher for the next morning, I can train harder the next morning. So it does, it does you are slightly outside of the, the stereotypical Irish culture, but it pays off. My ambitions now, it's my first year out of 123, so it's my first year into senior, so I'm starting to look at getting that performance standard to qualify for the Olympic Games next year at the Worlds in SEO. So it's looking at semi-finals and start to creeping up that rankings in the semi-finals if that all goes well. So it's really good to see as well that we're absolutely on the brink of Irish paddling really starting to make its mark on the, on the international scene. So the green machine, all the guys coming up through, all the competition inside the team is going to really start making a mark outside on the World Cup circuit.
World Cup standings after the first race. Sebastian Schubert took his first victory in three years, closely followed by Darius Popiela from Poland. These are the starting list for the K1, the fastest men on the planet. They're all known as complete flyers. Joe Clark, as you can see in the graphics, 2016 Olympic champion. 2017 was a bit of a relaxed year, but he's come back looking stronger than ever. Now that is how to do an upstream, in and out, keeping the boat crucially moving. With his great power, he's really using the currents. As you can see, the red and whites are set where the water's slower, so you really have to use your own muscle power. Three seconds up on the field. In fact, he was only the second to go. Good supporters from the side. Up, up, up means go faster. Coming down the end part. The water's really moving fast here. You really have to position your boat if you don't, of course. The winter trainings kept him good. And that's a sensational time. Faster than all the 40 athletes who went in the semi-final. It's going to be something to beat. Peter Cowes are the king. He's been the top man for maybe the last 10 years. Also a very fast sprint paddler from Slovenia, of course. Known to have an amazing feel of the water. He was brought up by his father, Kauza Senior, who's also his coach. He's always been in the water and you just know he's doing the right thing. Had a whole season out after dislocating his shoulder in the Worlds in London a couple of years ago, but really just putting the head through told me before the race he doesn't particularly like this course but it seems to be doing something right now has the strength has the fitness well, it shows how good Joe Clark was now Yuri Priskovic he used to run along the bank watching his father when he was a three four five year old known as little Yuri but really came to his own winning the world championships and one of a flying quartet from the Czech Republic. The Czechs came first and second in the World Championships in Poe in 2017. Yuri just missing out, had to qualify against Vavra Hradilek and did the job. He's known as the 100% man. And clearly has an amazing feel for the water. The up, up, up from the Czech supporters really comes over the line, gives us it all. Now third position, that's interesting. That's exactly the same finish as there was in the Rio Olympics. So, Joe Clark, gold for Great Britain, Peter Kauser, silver for Slovenia, and Yuri Priskovic, bronze for the Czech Republic. I'm absolutely made up. Uh, been training well, uh, so it's always good to put it down in the race and just, yeah, just get my first World Cup win, so really happy. Standings, Joe Clark just edges out Sebastian Schubert, but three more World Cups to go. C1 World Cup standings, Jess Fox won in Liptovsky, Teresa Fizarova kept really close. And these are the athletes lining up for the final. Two Foxes there with younger sister Noemi. So, Anna Satila, 22 years old. Can you believe this? She actually competed in the London Olympics. She's looking forward to competing in her home course in Rio de Janeiro, which is going to beat the World Championships in the end of the summer. She's also a very accomplished paddler in the K1, based in Europe now. Anna's really coming on, really maturing. One of the most popular athletes on the circuit. So, an early penalty. Two seconds automatically added onto the score, as you see. Makes things more difficult. Just putting the head in. Can't you keep it together? She goes in the first place. Nuria Villarubla from Le Cédio Gael. When you go into the village of Le Cédio Gael, Nuria lives there and knows absolutely everyone. She's a qualified children's teacher. But also a rather good paddler. Had a bit of a down year last year, 2016. She was really on top of form. 
Really good feel for the water. Really pushing the canoe discipline in Spain. As you can see, the paddles always keeping in the water. These athletes are doing what's called switching. They're trying to keep the paddle on their most strong side. And she's doing the best I've seen her for many, uh, many a month into second place. Now, the reason these girls are not ecstatic is that Jess Fox hasn't gone down yet. Here she comes. We saw her. It's actually the day before winning the K1 discipline. She's got the game face on. Sponsored by many top brands, which shows she's really not only in paddling, but as an ambassador for the sport, she's really making her mark. And number one clearly means the top athlete in the world. So she's more accomplished than anyone else at switching. Last weekend, she won by seven seconds, 1.61 up with a two second penalty. Understands how the water works better than anyone, but trains probably as hard as anyone, if not more. Really using the core muscles to place the boat in the right situation, switching again. Her mother's a coach. They really spend a lot of time together understanding the water and understanding what the tactic is. She's got four seconds of penalties. However, the speed is extraordinary. Well, everything changes, but everything stays the same. That's another victory for Jess Fox. And the standings, Jess Fox wins. Nguyen Villarubla second, and Anna Satila takes the third place. Jess Fox has been in four races this season and won them all. The final, the conditions changed so much there towards the end. Um, I think I was lucky to go down when it wasn't raining, wasn't windy, and I had a great run. Uh, touches though, which I was a bit frustrated with, and I didn't actually see my time at the end, so I was annoyed, but it was a fast run, and, and I'm yeah very happy to win again. And it, I feel I feel bad for the girls who raced at the end when those conditions were really, really difficult. So of course, with two wins out of two, Jess Fox leads the standings with Vicky Wolfhart, the European champion, in second place. Hi, my name is Sage Donnelly. I'm 17 years old, and I'm from Carson City, Nevada, in the United States. I started um, when I was about five in uh, actually a freestyle boat and then I started creek racing when I was about nine and solemn racing when I was about eight and when I turned 14 I decided to start taking solemn seriously so I could make our junior team and it's just been more and more solemn ever since. I've had a few medical challenges, uh, which I'm in control of, and my goal is to go to the 2020 Olympics in canoe and kayak salt. So my first World Cups were in 2016 in canoe and Liceo and Po. So that was when I kind of felt like I was thrown in the deep end. Um, but this year I'm feeling like I have a good amount of experience under my belt. I made my first semifinals last year in Avrea at the World Cup. So this year I'm actually feeling good and like I'm ready. <laughs> I spend most of my time in canoe um, because I have better habits in it, so I'm trying to transfer those over to kayak. Um, so just keep training super hard in both and working hard and racing well and having fun. Uh, the Solemn community has actually um, embraced me very well and it's been super amazing to meet all of my heroes, um, but I do think they're a bit scared of me in the extreme Solemn races. Extreme Canoe Slalom, women's final. There were quarterfinals, semifinals, and now it is the top four athletes. Two went through from each heat. The rules are very simple. You're released. You need to go the correct direction around the blow-up poles. Green for down. Paulina from Russia is making it look good. Oh, you see the athletes have a choice of the upstreams. The current's using against them. 
Now the Eskimo turn. It has to be done in a designated area. All athletes have already been down twice in the last few minutes. Can you see they have to go around the right way? Last choice. This is interesting because it's a stagger. You can either take early or late. And sometimes athletes come in your way, but no doubt about the top athlete for today. She's very determined, she's very experienced. It's Paulina Mogaleva from Russia who takes the victory. So, Paulina Amira and Yi. Well, it was difficult after the Eskimo roll, but when you go from gates five to six, everyone pushes each other. And even if you start not from first to third position, you can still finish first. So, Stavkovsky, Smolin, Gubenko, Dawson, Kazakhstan, USA, Russia, New Zealand are the gentlemen competing together, and it's a very dynamic start. The idea is you really need to move to water left. That's the right of your screen to get round the first very difficult boy. Mike Dawson oh, whacks the post out of the way. I'm not sure that's too ethical, but there you go. He was third in the World Championships and is a renowned whitewater paddler, but the others are keeping close to him. So this has proven to be a difficult gate. They're all sticking together. Maybe the best options to go on the right side. But they're coming through very nicely at the moment. Still very close together. Eskimo turn. Well, they're all up and out safely. We have seen in the heats, though, quite a lot of positions are changing hands. Smolin from the United States is leading at this stage. With Gabenko from Russia coming through closely. Hey, but Dawson stuck. It does give a window opportunity from Nikita Gabenko. From Russia, this would be amazing. It's his first race in this circuit. And he comes through, closely followed by Dawson and Smolin. Well, look at that, two Russians in a row. So, Gubenko, Dawson, Smolin, Stamovsky. Circuit proving very popular discipline. Well, today is a really interesting race. The course was uh, a little bit difficult, but yeah, I really liked it. Really interesting. So, World Cup 2 from Krakow in Poland has finished. What a wonderful event. We've enjoyed it. I hope you have at Planet Canoe. Keep watching. See you soon.